Hello, 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 and welcome everybody to uh, another wonderful week of distance learning today for math. We're reviewing something that we've already covered before, but I think it's really important to kind of circle back to this um, because it's something that, you know, the more and more we multiply fractions, uh, the more and more we're going to be seeing improper fractions, particularly when we get into mixed number multiplication. Uh, we're going to see, you know, a, a fair amount of improper fractions. So I think it's really important to kind of come back around and uh, review this concept. Uh, here's what you're going to need. Something to write on, something to write with. Please have something to write on and something to write with when you're working on math. It's not in the classroom, so we don't all have the same exact math notebook that we're, you know, being directed to come to the rug or open up at your desk with. Um, but please do have something to write on and something to write with. Okay, this stuff gets more challenging when you're doing it mentally. Okay, so please uh, practice it uh, with paper, on paper, or on a whiteboard first. Down here, here's the I cans. They say this, I can use division to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number, and I can give a remainder in fraction form. And that's what we're gonna cover today. Uh, in our kind of intro, again, thinking about fractions being division in disguise. Essentially what we're doing when we're thinking about fractions is we're breaking a unit into equal parts, right? And we're, we're kind of, again, we really are dividing up something into equal parts. And this comes into play in particular when we're dealing with improper fractions. Remember, improper fractions are a fraction whose value is greater than one. The numerator is greater than uh, the value of the denominator, meaning you've got more pieces than can fit into one whole unit, okay? In this case, we've got 14 thirds. What we want to do when we're converting an improper fraction into a mixed number is we want to think about how many whole units, in this case whole ones, can I make with this quantity, okay? And the denominator is important here, okay? We are working in thirds. So how many thirds equals a whole unit? How many thirds equals one, right? Three thirds equals one. So in order to find out how many whole units we have, we need to know how many groups of three thirds, right? How many ones, how many groups of three thirds? So if we take a fractions bar, we divide it into thirds, right? We've got 14 of these things, 14 thirds, right? We need to know how many whole ones they make. So we can just take the 14 and let's make some groups of three, right? Um, I'm gonna use, I usually use like tally marks, but those can look like ones. So I'm gonna use something different. I'm gonna use X's. Okay, there's three thirds. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's our 14 X's, and each X in this case equals one third. So now, how many whole fractions bars? How many ones did I end up with here? One, two, three, four. And then what's left over? Two X's or two what's? If each X equals one third, Then I end up with what? One third plus one third, two thirds. Okay, so we end up with 14 thirds equals four and two thirds. Okay, there's our idea there. I'll see scoot it closer because it's a little small. There we go. Ta da. Right? So really thinking here with your improper fractions, your denominator is going to be your key there because it's gonna tell you how many in each group equals one, right? 
if we have something like, let's try one different one here with a different denominator. <clears throat> let's try uh, 21 fifths. Okay, 21 fifths. So in this case, how many, if I, I'm making my x equal to 1 fifth, how many of those x's are going to fit in uh, one whole unit? How many fifths equal 1? Yeah, 5, right? When the numerator and denominator are the same, you've got 1, right? It's like cutting a, a pizza into 5 slices and eating all 5 slices. You've eaten 5 fifths of the pizza or the whole thing. I bet you're full. So <clears throat> let's take our, we'll count out 21, and we'll put them in groups of five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So now, how many groups of five, how many five-fifths do I have? I've got, same as last problem, I've got four whole groups, okay, four groups of five-fifths, or four ones, with what left over? One what? One-fifth, exactly, okay? We are making this, officially making the switch here from saying four remainder one to four and one-fifth, okay? It's a little more exact that way. So even if you're doing you know, long division, right? We can still say it in the form of a fraction because we know how many equals one, how many um, units in each group equals one, right? So if you have something like 382 divided by six and you get a remainder, I don't know if you'd get a remainder for that. No, you would, you'd get a remainder for that. If you had something like 382 divided by six, you could say your remainder is in sixths. Okay. Not remainder one-sixth, but and one-sixth. Okay. Um, let's go to our digital whiteboard blackboard, and uh, let's try a couple more on your own here. Zoop. There it is. All right. First one, let's try... Hmm. Let's try this one. Let's try 11. Oops, I need a pen for that. 11 halves. So how many whole ones can you make with 11 halves? Right, what group or what, um, what is our, what is going to be our group here? How many halves equal one? And then how many groups of that amount can you make with 11? Right, so because we're in halves, we're going to be making groups of two halves. So how many groups of two can you make with 11? Right? You can draw it out beforehand if you want. You can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. With each x equals 1 half in this case. So you have 11 halves. And now let's make groups of two halves because two halves equals 1. And we end up with one, two, three, four, five, and one half left over. So we have five whole groups of two halves, and then one half remaining. So you end up with five and one half. Check in the chat. I'm seeing, ooh, four for four. Everybody that put an answer in the chat says five and a half, and I would tend to agree with you. Well, let's try one more that can be a little trickier, and I'm going to step back for this one and let you try it on your own. Let's go with hmm, 37 fourths. 37 fourths. 
Now, 37 is a bigger numerator than we've seen so far. Do you have to draw out all 37? You certainly can. That would get you an exact answer, right? But you can also draw on your smaller multiplication division facts, thinking about, okay, well, if I know I have 37, how many groups of four? Four times what? Or what divided by four is going to get me close to 37? without going over. Because remember, you can't have more than 37, right? My first thought went to, well, I know 10 groups of four would be 40, but I don't have 40 fourths, I just have 37. So it's gotta be less than 10. Hmm, I wonder if my multiplication chart would help. Let's go get it. There you are, hello. Um, let's take a look at our fours and see how many groups of four we can get to without going over. I'll make myself bigger. Zoop. Hello. Uh, let's go to our fours. Let's see how far, where, where can we get to? How many groups of four fourths? 36 is less than 37, but close. And that's how many groups of four? Nine. So I know that 36 fourths is going to be nine groups of four fourths, or nine uh, whole units. So let's start there. So if I know that 36 fourths equals nine, let's use some subtraction to figure out uh, what I have left. So 37 minus 36, that would be one fourth. So we know 37 fourths is nine, and one fourth left over. Okay, and I'm looking in the chat and I see straight down some nine and one fourths. Great, you can't see because my big head's in the way still. There we go, ha ha. All right, let's try one more. I'm just gonna give you one to leave you on. I'm not even gonna give you the answer on this one. I'm just gonna say, let's go for it. Um, let's try, mm, let's go with this one. Let's go 25 ninths. 25 ninths. How many groups of nine ninths can we make with that 25? And then how many ninths are left over? Okay, uh, work on that one. Drop your answer in the chat when you're done. Uh, and then our exit ticket is going to look pretty similar. Okay, it's going to give you some uh, practice ones. Please do that work on scratch paper or on a whiteboard. Okay, um, you know, if you're feeling comfortable doing it in your head, try it, maybe try it in your head first and then check it on paper. Okay, that's kind of our in between before we just start doing these fraction conversions in our head. Uh, on a whim, we need to make sure that we're uh, checking on, on paper first. All right. Uh, and then once you, you know, once you know and get like 20 in a row or 30 in a row correct by checking them on paper, then you're probably safe. All right. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, math office hour. Please do. I'm going to say it every time. Math office hour. Come and uh, try some stuff. Okay. If you want Long division practice, let's do it. You want multi-digit multiplication practice, let's do it. If you want, um, heck, if you want subtraction practice, come get some subtraction practice. I'll throw any subtraction problem at you that you want. All you gotta do is speak up and ask, okay? I am here for you. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Have a wonderful rest of math time and I will see you this afternoon if you're in my class. If you're not in my class and you're just joining to get a uh, fractions review, then good on you and have a great rest of the day.